Hello, today we're talking about state symbols and particle theory, but firstly we're going to look at the idea of particles in solids, liquids and gases. So we know that uh, we have solids, liquids and gases, they're all made of particles, but we use the word particle to cover either ions, atoms or molecules. So, so just to simplify things, we use the word particles, and when we're talking about solids, we say that the particles are arranged in, let's just highlight that there, so particles are arranged in rows and columns, or sometimes you say in a lattice structure, they are very close together and they vibrate about fixed positions. For our liquid, we have the particles arranged more randomly, they are slightly further apart and they don't vibrate around a fixed position, but they do move randomly in different directions. For our gas, the particles are also arranged very randomly, but they are much further apart, so we describe them as further apart, and that's how um, we would have the particles in a gas. Now, we know that a solid can be changed to a liquid by melting it, and we can change a liquid to a gas by boiling it, which would make it evaporate, so we can actually add the word evaporate there. But if we're talking about melting points and boiling points, those are the words we should perhaps use. And what we have here then is a way of describing our particles, how they're arranged, and how they go from one state to another. This is a model we use to help us explain how particles behave. And scientists use models a lot. And the reason these models are a lot in science is because it either one helps us to explain what's going on or what happens, or it helps us to understand what's going on. So it's a much simplified, simplified version of what happens in reality. Now, there is a slight problem with using this model or using models in science, and they're not because they're not often close to what happens in reality. So we could take a look at what the limitations are of using a model or in particular using this model for solids, liquids and gases. So we've got our model on the left and our what's in reality on the right hand side. And the first point is that when we do our model, we often show the particles as either solid spheres or solid shapes or circles even. But in reality, the particles are either atoms, molecules or ions. And there's a little diagram of an atom. That's in fact also a model because that's not exactly how it is in real life. Um, the particles in our model don't have forces between them. Whereas in reality, the particles have either have forces between them or they are bonded together. One example that we could talk about in terms of bonding is our ionic bond, which we looked at in a great deal of detail in previous videos. In our model, the particles are not usually shown as bonded, but as we said, we have different kinds of bonds that happen between particles, ionic, covalent and metallic. And in our model, the particles are not moving, unless it's an animation or using marbles or something like that, the particles are not moving, whereas in reality the particles do move, or if it's a solid they are vibrating or they vibrate about fixed positions. Okay, so some of those, these are some of the limitations of our model, and you should make a note of those, uh, just to make sure you can explain them if you needed to. What we're looking at now is state symbols, and state symbols are basically abbreviations to say whether a substance is a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So we just use the letters as shown on the screen. So we have an S for solid, L for liquid, and G for gas. Um, there is one more which we're going to look at, in fact. So here on the left-hand side, we've got some sodium chloride, which is just common salt, sodium chloride, in solid form. And you can see that the particles are arranged as they should be in a solid. We can actually dissolve this in water. So we could just add our sodium chloride to water, and it would dissolve, and then we would have what we call a solution. There is a word we use for a substance that's dissolved in water, and that word is aqueous, A-Q-U-E-O-U-S, and we use the abbreviation A-Q in brackets, as we have done with the others. So these are our state symbols that we use in formula equations when we're describing chemical reactions. Here are three examples of chemical reactions. We've got two that are balanced, no, sorry, two that are unbalanced and one that is balanced. So the last one here is unbalanced. So you might want to pause here and have a go at balancing the first one. If not, we can go ahead and balance that one. So for number one, we would put a two in front of the H2O and a two in front of the H2. And this is one that you should be familiar with. You should know that hydrogen is a gas, oxygen is a gas, and water is a liquid. The second one, we are not balanced, but you can have a go at that one if you wanted to and that would balance like so. 
probably worth reminding ourselves that that too applies to the whole compound and not just the Na at the front. So that makes the Cl balance and the Na balance as well. So Na is a solid, that's sodium metal, chlorine gas and sodium uh, chloride is a solid as a result of that reaction. In our last one, hydrochloric acid is aqueous, sodium hydroxide, which is our second compound, is also aqueous. We have sodium chloride, this time it's dissolved in water as a result of this reaction. So we say aqueous and water is a liquid. Third one, not so obvious in terms of what state these are in because we need, probably need a bit more information in terms of how the reaction happened. But this tells us, number three tells us that we have three in solution, three substances in solution and one as a liquid.